Hello, and welcome to PlayPosit 101. And you'll be learning today about making your videos interactive. Do you get frustrated when your students don't watch your videos? I know in my online classes, this is an ongoing problem, but PlayPosit can help. At the end of this session, you will be able to identify three best practices for instructional videos, describe three ways that PlayPosit can help encourage student engagement with your videos, and you'll be able to create your own interactive video with embedded student interactions. Let's get started. So we'll start with talking about the best practices for instructional videos. The first one is that you should keep your speaking style conversational. This helps students stay engaged with your content and helps make it a more enjoyable experience for everyone involved. Second, you should keep your recordings short. This is the one that I struggle the most with, but the research says six minutes or less is best. Now I know sometimes that can be really hard with instructional videos, so my personal goal is to stay at under 10 minutes. And then making it interactive. Research has shown that actually embedding things into the video or asking students questions while a video plays is a good way to keep them engaged. And PlayPosit takes this to the next level. So I'm going to review some of the possible interactions. Now, depending on if you go with a free or a paid PlayPosit plan, there are different options and there are more options than I'm going to mention here today. But these are the basics that'll get you started and show you what an amazing tool this really is. So first you have multiple choice questions. These are auto graded. You can leave feedback for each answer that a student may cho choose and you can actually have the video jump back to a previous portion or ahead, depending on how a student answers. Then we have the multiple answer or ordering. These are also self-graded and they can allow for partial credit if you so choose. They also have feedback options as well. Next is fill in the blank and you can put in multiple reasonable answers and spelling does count. So when I care about spelling, I only put in the correct spelling, but I might um, include like a number that's spelled out or the written number. If I don't care about spelling, then I might include some common misspellings like swap swapping the IE um, in a word. And then we have short answer. These are not auto graded. So you do have to then go into the program and grade them yourself if you um, assign these for points, but it allows students to reflect on things and to write longer responses. I've had students write multiple paragraphs. The discussion feature is really cool. There aren't points associated with it, but you can choose to have it open for the entire video or for just a section. And this allows students to, at specific points in the video, type responses. Now it's asynchronous, so at the time that each student watches the video, different people's responses will be showing and they can respond to each other. I've had a lot of success with my students engaging with this. Um, and I think for asynchronous online classes especially, it allows for some additional interaction. And then this isn't a type of response, but I think it's just important to note that when you are putting in a question, you can do so verbally. There is a math editor, you can input pictures, um, and your feedback can be done verbally too. I wanted to make mention of this because I think it is one way to, again, connect with your students, especially if they are only online students, and it makes it more personalized. So how do you get started? There are four main steps. One, either record a video yourself or you can find a video that you wanna use. So you can take any video from YouTube or Vimeo, for instance, and include it and add questions. So sometimes I do that with say crash course videos. The second thing you can do or that you need to do is to insert the video into the PlayPosit platform. Typically do this by putting the URL from wherever the video is hosted into PlayPosit. So I host my videos on YouTube. I usually do them unlisted and then I put them into PlayPosit. 
Then you add your interactions within the video. So you start watching the video and as it plays, when you want to add a question, you just click add interaction, pick the kind, fill out all the information and keep going. They even have templates that will get you started, like having pre and post questions about their understanding of a topic. And that makes it extra quick. And lastly, you're gonna assign the video to students. So one way to assign the video to students is via a link. But if you have the right type of license for PlayPosit and your school works with you, you can actually have it connect to Blackboard or Canvas and other learning management systems so that the student's points go directly into the gradebook. So those auto-graded um, question types will get graded right away and the written ones you'll have to go in and grade but then they will also sync to the grade book i'm going to show you in the next part of this video a quick walkthrough of all four of these steps i hope it's helpful and gets you excited about all the different ways that you can use PlayPosit in your classroom for any sort of video lesson or lecture that you already do this is especially helpful if you do a flipped model here we are in PlayPosit, and what they call Bulbs are just the videos with added questions. So you can see I have a lot of them. Look, there's 20 per page and I have eight pages. You can reuse them, um, but I'm gonna show you how to add a new one. So I'm actually gonna do an updated version of how and why we read because right now I have a lot of short answer questions in it and I would prefer that it be auto graded. So I click new bulb and I'm ready to get going. So I am going to input the URL which I've already copied from YouTube. So I click here, paste. It'll show up to make sure that you have the right one. Okay, you can change the title if you want to, and then you can hit, now's the good part, inserting the videos. So you can go to interactions up here at the top, and there are a bunch of templates. So this is a great place to get started. Learner feedback is one I always like to do because at the end, it'll ask your students just generally what they thought of the video. And that can be interesting to you to see. So you can see it's just gonna be a poll. It doesn't have a grade associated it, and it has a short answer without points associated with it. So I, I do really like that one, okay? But I'm gonna go back to interactions and that it put it exactly at the end. Um, and then I'm gonna open the template gallery again. You can have learner notes um, and that'll teach students how to use the notes feature. So there is a way for students to like type their notes while they're watching a video. You can have interactions that tell students how to do things. So if it's your first one, you might wanna do that. You could add the discussion. We've talked about that. Um, so you can add it for the whole time. So I think I'm gonna apply that for this since it's non-graded, but that'll still allow students to reflect and engage with each other. Um, this is usually a video I use at the beginning. So you can see it's gonna play from the very beginning to the very end. And we will look at this as a thing, but it also will put in some initial ideas of what to do. I can change this and it the students can add their own voices and things in there too, which is really cool. And then I'm gonna go back to the template gallery, pre and post assessment, this is great. It just asks a question at the beginning and the end about what do you know or want to learn about this topic? Excuse me. And then at the end, what did you learn? A summative, if you want to ask all your questions at the end, it'll add four multiple choice questions. Now you have to type in the answers, you know, and the questions. Um, or you can have five free response and poll questions at the end. But I'm going to just do it manually at this point. So I'm going to close the template gallery. And to add interactions as you go, you'll want to hit play. And this is crash course. And Can you'll just watch the video the it doesn't feel like crash course as it goes until rolling. you get to a point that you want to ask a question. So I'm going to scoot so if you watch our series on world history, you'll, no, you'll no doubt remember that writing and the ability to read it are so-called markers of civilization. Now, that's a really problematic idea. I mean, for one thing, great stories can have great lives. So I liked what he was saying about markers of civilization. So I'm gonna try to get back to that. It are so-called markers of civilization. Now that's a really problematic. Okay, and I'm going to add this interaction. So I'm gonna add an interaction at 28 seconds. 
what kind do I want to add? I'm going to do a fill in the blank. Writing and the ability to read it are considered. And I'm going to add the blank. And then type comma separated acceptable answers. So markers of civilization. And I should make sure I have it typed right so that there's no errors in there. And I'm going to say done. So that's in there. It'll be graded. And then I'm going to keep going. Dear authorial intent, as an author, let me speak to you directly. You don't matter. Whether an author intended a symbolic resonance to exist in her book is irrelevant. All that matters is whether it's... So here I'm going to add another question. So I'm going to add an interaction at 258 and this time I'm going to do multiple choice but I'm actually going to make this a true false question so I'm going to type here true or false green believes authorial intent is important true false and it was false and then I can add one more question as we get down here. And I could just have my students do a poll just to see what they're thinking. And this is not graded, it's just an opinion. Do you like to read? Yes. No. Do books on tape count? And then they'll have the questions about how they liked the bulb at the end and they're good to go. So now that I am done, I can click review up here. I can add a learning objective. I can tag it um, with keywords and tags. I can choose my playback, playback option. So you can decide whether they can rewind after a question shows up or if you want to allow them to skip interactions. Now, if it's for grades or for points, I probably would not allow that. Um, same with fast forwarding. Um, you can allow them to retake the bulb um, or rewatch the video and answer the questions again for a better score. You can allow learners to view their printable report. I think that's a great one to do. Um, they can increase the playback speed. That allows them to customize it a little bit. Um, or you could disable captions. And I can't think of a reason to do that, but it does give you that option. And then for privacy, I'm in my school account so i can choose whether keep it private to just me to members of my school or site the district or institution or to have it to everybody when i use public youtube videos that i didn't create i like to keep my bulbs public because i figure it's fair for anybody to use them but if it's my own private work or very specific to my class i usually keep it private save the changes And now I can preview it. And this will show you what the students will see. You hit play. So now you can see that the discussion is at the side and I can start posting already. Um, if I click the audio, I could put in my voice right here. And it paused because I clicked on that. All right, but I'm gonna hit play again. And you'll see there's a little white dot everywhere that there is an interaction. So if you watch our series on world history, you'll no doubt remember that writing and the ability to read it are so-called markers of... So now I know I actually put that a little too early, but the question should show up. Where's my question here? Yeah. So here's my question. You have to switch over from the discussion. Um, I think those are cut off a little bit in the video. Markers of civilization. And I can also make this so this question would cover the whole screen if I wanted to. So sometimes I do that in case the answer is on the screen. And I'm going to hit submit. And it says correct. All right. This is where I could enter customized feedback for the correct or for the wrong answer. Then I hit continue. And they're going to keep questioning. And it goes back to the discussion. So that's about it. Let me um, get out of this. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to hit close. All right, so now that I'm here, I have my new bulb. 
I can click on the side here and because I'm in Blackboard, I could assign it to my students by setting the bulb link. That would make it link up. You can also get links to share it here as well. Or you can even broadcast these live in the classroom. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you see monitor, that's how I would grade it. So let's see if it'll show real quick. I can't show you my actual classes because, oh, it's probably not gonna show you because I didn't assign it to a class because I can't show you my students' names. It's a really great interface. It's easy to use. It shows correct questions in green, wrong ones in red. So you can get a quick visual as to how students did in that on any specific question. I hope this was all helpful to you and let me know if you have any questions about PlayPosit or any other ideas for how to make it work for you.